So, podcasting is the big thing in the virtual learning environment. Might be scary. Broadcasting was once the province of professionals that spoke proper English and knew one end of a microphone from another. They had a wide audience and they broadcast. Now, with the advent of podcasting, we've all got to do it, apparently. What is a podcast? It's a digital file that is downloadable to a device, such as a phone or a computer, so that it can be listened to or viewed at any time by the user. The best ones can be short, informative or funny. Geek Brief made Callie Lewis an authority on technology through her video podcasts. The BBC catches lapsed time audiences, both listeners and viewers, by podcasting their programmes. But those are the pros, and technically podcasting has some similarities to broadcasting, but not a lot. Even so, it can seem like too much trouble. For the hard-pressed teacher, the expectation on them to do a podcast can seem too high. If it's video, there's issues of lighting, obviously makeup and self-image, and there's mise-en-scene. Not to mention learning new software, how to edit, and finding the time amid the paperwork, teaching hours and marking to make a completely new resource. But nowadays, for better or for worse, most teachers do PowerPoint. And a simple voiceover, much like the narration you would use in class, can be applied to a PowerPoint. And there you have it, a PowerPoint podcast. To do your own podcast, you will need PowerPoint and Keynote, a copy of Audacity, downloaded free and probably already on your machine, and a script. Yes, you need a script. It's easy to think you can um, uh, speak spontaneously, but actually you need a script. Divide your script up into the narration you want on each slide. Open Audacity, create a new file each time, take a deep breath, click record and speak. I find this easier with a headset and a microphone, but most machines will record with a built-in mic. Just remember that though, they can hear everything. When you want to play back your recording, drag the play headline back along the track and listen. If you don't like it, select all, delete and try again, or just make a new file. Make a new file for every slide and record slide by slide. That should give you a fair chance of getting a good take. You can edit in Audacity, but if you don't want to, just re-record until you're happy. Now you're ready to import your sound files. Open up your PowerPoint and either drag and drop them onto the slide or import the file just like a picture. Play back and you're done. So, here's the thing. Try as I might, I couldn't quite get PowerPoint to export with sound. It would export a very nice silent movie, which might in itself be useful as QuickTime, but to get it to go with sound, you have to import it into Keynote, which basically means open Keynote, open your PowerPoint, Keynote will open it. You might then have to fiddle a bit with the incompatibilities and the timings, and then export to QuickTime as a movie. When you're exporting to QuickTime, use half screen. It's better for an iPod. Remember, write big, write short. Someone's got to read this on a tiny little device. Too many PowerPoints look like this.
And now for the disclaimers. Yes, I know there's a linked selection facility in PowerPoint, which allows you to talk to your slide and will time it for you. This might seem easier, and if you're very prepared, you can probably talk through your slides one by one using mouse click to pause and unpause your recording. Like I said, don't use the space bar to do that. You get a nasty click on the recording. Sounds just like a magnetized razor blade used to sound on reel-to-reel seven inch per second magnetic tape. Take it from me, I remember. The problem with the PowerPoint facility is that you can't re-edit very easily and you can't see your sound levels. For just a little extra hassle, you can get easier access to better quality sound. Now it's done, what to do with it then? Well, upload it. Upload it to your VLE, to your blog or to both, and then hope the students find it. You can even play it through the computer in class while you catch up on some marking. Now, I'm sure no one would ever do that. Enjoy. <laughs>